Good afternoon, everyone. Happy New Year to you. Welcome to Sandy Park. On this crisp winter's day in the southwest of England, two teams who started 2024 on the front row of the grid. Northampton sends the visitors who have their noses just in front of today's host sets of the Chiefs in the Gallagher Premiership table, a point between them after round 10 a week ago. Seven wins apiece so far, so we should be in for an entertaining afternoon, although our entertainment can be another man's anticipation. Let's hear from both camps as we approach kickoff in just a few minutes. Well, Rob, before a ball was kicked this weekend, it's a top of the table clash. Um, expectation wise, probably take that one. Oh, 100%. You know, in the build up to now, you know, it's, it's what we it's where we want to be, you know, that's what makes it exciting. The thing is, it's, it's nice when you kind of talk to players at the start of the season and go, there's a lot of things that are in your hands and the season can be very exciting and you can have people talking about you, you can see some nice things in the press, but you tend to be, need to be in a winning team towards the right end of the table and that's kind of what's happened. So that's kind of very rewarding for the players. And, and now we're here, it feel, obviously feels like a really big game, but the truth is, the way the league's panning out, you can't say there's not a big game anymore. You, know, you, you lose one game, you end up in you know, the fifth or sixth. You win a couple of games and you certainly find the table. So. In theory, this game's no bigger than last week. It's beating Bristol that got us to this position. But now it feels like a really big game because one of us is probably going up top of the table. So, no, it's, it's, a, it's a nice position to be in. You mentioned people talking about you. Steve Walford this week has talked about Manny and he's talked about Ethan and, and Greg and Henry Slade. How's the reaction been to that this week? Well, obviously, the guys are, the guys are loving it. And as, as I said, you know, it's, it, it is nice to see them actually going, oh, actually... Maybe it does work like this, you know, we, we play well together and we, we try to build a successful team, you get those few results, people do look at you differently and they do start to see your, quality, your positive qualities and not just the negative qualities and that, that's how we've tried to approach it with the players, we want them to go out and show their best and enjoy doing what they're doing and at the moment, you know, until now we've, we've ripped our walls, particularly at home, but you know, as you saw last night with Sale, you know, assuming your home record will win games of rugby isn't what it's about, you've got to turn up every week and make it happen. Well, Phil, top of the table at New Year for the first time in four years. How have you been wearing that this week? Uh, we haven't been worrying too much about that. Um, obviously, with the challenge that's coming today, top of the table clash uh, against a side that have got an incredible home record. Uh, we've been focusing on what we need to do today to make sure that we can uh, translate that. You made five changes. Talk us through them. Um, some are enforced. Uh, some are based on managing minutes. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah there's, there's different things, different elements that... that um, gives us opportunity to give different players um, a chance and I think that's the exciting thing at the moment is that whoever we're putting in those positions um, they're relishing that and, and they're grabbing that opportunity and it makes selection meetings very difficult. This week uh, second Smith was mentioned by Steve Borthwick, Finn obviously, if he had to answer the call for that 10 shirt come Six Nations time or certainly in the squad is that something you'd be, be keen to see? Yeah of course, um, with all the players in the group we want to push them and, and hopefully they can achieve some of their ambitions. Uh, Finn's been outstanding um, for a long period of time now. He's been in the England camp during the World Cup preparations, so he knows what that's all about and he wants to take the next step, clearly. Uh, the competition's red hot in that space. Um, but again, you know, opportunities like today and challenges like today will, um, will show what he's capable of. Exeter Chiefs are a side that seem delighted to be where they are, perhaps exceeding expectation. Does that make them a slightly trickier side to face today? Um, I think what they're doing on the pitch makes them uh, the tricky opposition that they are and I think um, they've been an outstanding, um, an outstanding prospect throughout. Um, you know, credit to Rob Baxter and his coaching group and, and all those players who stepped up with the young group and, and really taking the ball by the horns and being outstanding particularly at home. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm pleased to say we have former England winner, winger Matt Banahan with us. Winner as well. Uh, a man who scored 100 tries in the blue, black and white of Bath. Matt, this young Chiefs team, we keep hearing about it. They've got the best try scoring record in the league. What do you like about them? Just they're young, they're brave, they're fearless. We go through a part from Slade, the age of them. That they don't have any baggage from previous games, previous seasons. They're going out and they're expressing themselves. That's what sport is. It's a, an idea of going out and expressing themselves, and they're doing it really well this year. And you can see by the tries that they score and the opportunities that they're creating, and it's exciting. And it's going against an experienced backline that's also doing the doing the same bit, sort of reinvented themselves with the Northampton. So the battle of the backline is the exciting part, Sally. Yeah, it certainly is. We can't wait for this. The sun shining. We uh, we have a dry track. And the atmosphere bubbling away. Over 13, 14,000, they're expecting to pack it out. The league's two best performing teams so far then, Exeter Chiefs and Northampton Saints. 
let's have a look at how they'll line up for this one this afternoon, starting with Exeter Chiefs. Rob Baxter's made five changes from last week's win at Bristol. Three of them in the pack. Club legend Jack Yendel is back in the starting number two shirt alongside Yosefa Scott, who was on the score sheet last week. Lewis Pearson joins Captain Jenkins in the second row with Jacques Vermeulen, Vermeulen bolstering a powerful back row where the likes of Fisselau and Roots have been doing sufficient work to get a name check this week from one Steve Borthwick. Joe Hawkins is given the nod to partner Henry Slade in midfield. In the back three, Tommy Wyatt's back into the 15 shirt, having missed the trip to Bristol. He's beaten the most defenders in the league this season. And on his right will be the man who's getting a lot of attention to, Faye Waboso, man of the match last week, and with four tries in seven league starts. Former Saint Erin Painter will face his former club from the bench. And it's a similar scene from Phil Dowson, who also makes five changes from Saints' win against Sale Sharks last Saturday. Tarek Hafar, Alex Moon and Sam Graham come into the pack with a bit of a reshuffle that sees Alex Cole slip into the back row, fresh from announcing a new deal with the club this week. Callum Braley makes a first appearance of the season at scrum half alongside Finn Smith, while out wide there's a switch up with slight home onto the right wing, while Tom Litchfield comes in to feature in the 11 shirt for the first time this season. Furbank, a tenth game as captain. Perhaps the most notable part of Saints' selection is the bench. New year and new deals for the likes of Mitchell and Dingwall. Impact players, finishers, whatever you call them, they could well be the difference today. Well, we saw packed houses over the festive period. Record numbers in the stands, record numbers watching at home as well. However you're enjoying this one, we are certainly looking forward to it. Sam Vesti just coming in to take his spot. Chiefs, the home side, currently enjoying a run of four wins in a row. Didn't manage to make it five in a row at any point in 2023. In fact, they started last year with this fixture as well. 35-12 victory against Saints that day. Tells you a lot about the evolution of this Chiefs team, that only two remain from the starting 15 that day. Jenkins and Henry Slade. Well, the Lambton Saints, well, they last topped the table in 2019, so their biggest challenge now is staying there. Fascinating to see the squad rotation in a week where the club have announced new deals. All the likes of Dingwall and Mitchell, Tom James to name another. Tommy Freeman left to watch Berger Odendahl starting at 13. Maybe just a point between them in the table, but it was Certainly more than a point between them at Franklin's Gardens in November when Saints dominated the reverse fixture, sending Chiefs back to Devon without anything from the game while bagging all five points themselves. The four try scorers for Saints that day, Freeman, Langdon, Mitchell, Dingwall, all left out of the starting 15 here. No doubt they'll have plenty to say from the bench. Hearing in those pre-match interviews, Matt Banahan, it's whether the pressure is more on Northampton Saints for what they want to achieve, what they believe they should be achieving with the quality of this side versus an extra the Chiefs side that we keep hearing is in evolution, but they find themselves right at the top end of the table. How do you see it? Yeah, I definitely think the battle today will be the last 20 minutes when the game opens up, when the substitutions have happened. I'm just really excited about the start of the game. Like, I know X are going to start well. The forwards are going to be big ball carriers, getting the backs into the game, watching Feo Vusa get the ball in hand, but watching the warm-up, watching the, the Finn Smith, George Furback link 10-12, even though he's at 15, he'll step, step up to be a second bow hand. How many times can he slot into that role to try and create opportunities on the outside for the lightning backs that, that Northampton have got? But it's, I think the game would not be controlled of how X to start. If they can stay in the fight and get their big ball carriers and their forwards carrying over the game line, that last 20 minutes are going to be interesting. There are so many areas of the game that both of these sides can excel in. It's who plays their cards at which point. Here come the home side. Rob Baxter saying this week that his chief side needs to show resilience. Having not started well at Franklin's Gardens in November. Yes. Referee is Anthony Woodthorpe, yeah, assisted by George Selwood and Neil Chivers in the truck. 
the eminent David Rose. Exeter are currently on a 23 game, 441 day, 63 week happy? unbeaten run at home. Their best in the Premiership place. era. Can the Northampton Saints end that run today? Okay. Seem to have uh, a number of people who have. Uh, Help form the guard of honour, just taking a bit of time to clear the pitch down okay. in the corner. That's what I'm referee Anthony Woodthorpe is waiting for. <laughs> and we're ready to go. Harvey Skinner sends it into the shady corner. The initial juggle from Callum Braley. Only just to get it away. First appearance of the season for Braley. Former Benetton man and, of course, Gloucester. Over 100 appearances. First chance for Exeter Chiefs playing in that home strip in the All Black. Tackle, let it go! Carry from Vermeulen onto the score sheet against Bristol last week. Then it's Roots, one of those who has caught the eye of one Steve Borthwick. Mentioned in dispatches this week as he spoke to the media, he'll be naming that Six Nations squad on the 17th of January. Patient from the Chiefs as they go either side. Skinner trying to choose the options as to where the forwards are going to pitch up. Yendl will play it away. And it's there for the man of the moment. Faye Wabosa just happy to deputise at scrum half. Try and keep the tempo going. Yendel again. It is key metres. And now it's Slade. Slade away for Vermeulen. Saints might have got themselves in position for the turnover, and they have. It was just long enough. Yeah, every single phrase of that breakdown, apart from the two snipes with Stu Townsend and Ferro Bosa, no back carried in any of those passes play. I think we had ten phases there as a forward carry in every phase, so now we know the way X are going to go. They're trying to batter the door down against Northampton until the opportunities open up and their bats can yep. take it. But yeah, great defence yeah. up at Northampton. They couldn't stop the momentum, but when they had that one opportunity to turn over, straight over the, the top of the ball, they've End got a the chance line. here to get out of their heart. For Mueller, one of those heavily involved at that stage. Tiptoeing out of the 22 as the ball under the arm of Mataface. Looking to play it back. Yep, ball's broken away. Tackle, look. let it go! On Braley up the short side, not too much on. Smith will uh, take on the nine duties, but that counter drive pleases the home fans. And use it! Give it a ripple of applause. Nine, let's go! Well defended there by Exeter on that ball. Pearson stayed part of the ball and stopped Braley, passing it back, taking his box kick, forcing him down that short side, and having to take that ruck to create that box kick there. Four backwards. Turned and couldn't hold on to it, went backwards in the end. Fissel out. Tackle! the contact. Side from Yosefa Scott. No 50 22. Skinner just looking to dink it in. It sat up momentarily. Smith needed the support that was on his shoulder from Furbank. And that will get just enough of a bounce to uh, take Saints out of their half. Yeah, no, I think Northampton know what's coming now. Three minutes, very direct extra approach. A little chip over the top, no, no back yet still to carry for the extra in open play, so Northampton know they've got a front up, they'll get opportunities, and the game will create opportunities on the outside channels. Voice of Matt Banahan, who is with us. Chiefs looking to just switch it up, come round the front with Roots. Townsend just had a little look. Tackle now, let it go. And back round, thank you. He spotted just in time by Hafar. Skinner, wrap around quite nicely. I'll try and go the same way. Bit of work for Hawkins to do to just try and get around. 
We've seen a couple of the backs carry the ball, Matt Banahan. Only on scuffing, but Fisselau has got through a lot of work at the start of this game. A lot of pick and goes, a lot of good, good, good carries, questioning Northampton defence. At that moment, Northampton need to get off the line a little bit harder, force the skills, because Exeter at the moment dictating everything here. And they're certainly getting the width on it, and in fact, it's the width that goes away for Roots and back inside for Hammersley. Slade involved as well. He's going to get in there to help give the protection and get Townsend the quicker ball that he wants. Oh, and they are going to get the advantage. Alex Moon not getting himself onside in time, and Skinner just pumped the dummy a couple of times. The door nearly opened for him. Now is it going to open over on the far side? They will look to put big carriers in those wide channels. This time it's in for Yendel. Northampton Saints defence being questioned here. Pearson looking to arrive at just the right time. From Newland trying to smuggle his way through. He's celebrating. He thinks he's got it. We haven't got a grounding, so we'll go on field. No try to do the bobbling ball. OK, check the grounding. Rosie? On field, we had no try. We've got the ball clearly bobbling forward. Just make sure it wasn't grounded previously. Just, uh, Woody, you're going to show you this shot now, this first one. It's going to come up for you now. You've seen number seven's in possession of the ball. Yeah, and he put the ground fit on the line there. Look at that one. Just, just bear with me again, Woody. You're going to rock and roll it back. Okay. Well, it's certainly it's looking. We have a penalty for offside. For all the money, like a try. Here it comes now. Yeah, Woody's on the line. The ball. Woody. Northampton yeah. were very the passive in defence the there, and when Exeter get in the 22, they're so clinical, they're probably the best in the league, yes. they're going to come away with points. They know what they've done, they've done it for years. Second try in as many weeks, Jacques Vermeulen takes sole responsibility for getting Chiefs on the board. Picks from the ruck, gets the score. Percent accuracy this season. And one out of one so far. Next will be definitely be positive in the way they've started this game. Front football, positive carries from the forwards, backs taking their time to get into the game, but they really have asserted themselves with such dominance. Northampton really have to find a way to stop this. Either get themselves ball in hand and create their momentum or really come off the line hard in defence. Finn Smith. Gets it restarted. Skinner in good position to send it back downfield. Furbank. Don't go forward. Into that wintry sunshine. Not going to be the easiest in the uh, Chiefs backfield. Oh, now has that gone forwards? Are they happy enough with that? It will be play on. That went, that went forward. Furbank. Oh, was he getting away with one? No, he wasn't. A bit of assistance from uh, David Rose, I think. Then the ball just stalled in the air. He thought it was carried him a little bit further. Just an unfortunate mistake. It had been a good kick battle there. I think we found we were going to come in the ascendancy there and get over the halfway line if he caught that. And now it's that opportunity for X to have another good start line. Maybe one of their backs will get carried now into the open field. Or Pislau pick off the base as he started the game very sprightly. Yeah, he certainly has. So, next to the Chiefs. Well, they've got a number of players close behind the scrum. They've also got a certain money for you, Oboso, as wide as he could possibly be. Yeah, I think that's stressing them out with Fur Furbank on the end of the line. He's, he's dragging him over so that there's a chip space as well as a run Set. option. But if he, Furbank stays that tight, they can hit a flat crossover kick to Fayo Oboso right now. Penalty advantage. So it is going to be a chance for them to play. Although. No immediate advantage coming. Referee is having to blow the whistle. Yeah. We could, uh, put money on, kick to the corner, drive, exhaust, get around the corner, the forwards, using that dominance they've created in the first nine minutes to create another try scoring opportunity. Certainly with the power that we know is awaiting on the Northampton Saints bench for when they choose to use it later on in the match. They're going to sense that whatever Chiefs can get on the board in these early, in this, well, certainly this first quarter, 
will be hugely valuable come then. Townsend, straight down off the top, Hawkins, route one. Townsend has another little look himself. Hammersley getting in there. Short ball. Saints get numbers under it. Chiefs have to at least get the ball back. Now they get another chance to try and drive. Oh, and turnover ball for the Saints. Super defensive work. And a net roll. On the very last blade of grass, they had to defend. Go 10 metres. We've got a net grab. Yeah. Hutchins in there, straight over the ball. Great net, steal net now. Roll. Fantastic, really saved his team there because extra on, on the roll there. Momentum carried over the ball. But now, I just talking about the subs. So I don't know if, if Exeter get a few more points. We'll let force the hand to make the, the substitutions earlier to try and bring those, those power hitters runners on. Certainly, Phil Dowson would say that he is backing the people who he has selected to start, like of Berger Odendahl in the centre without Tommy Freeman, who's on the bench. Odendahl making his debut last week. An awful lot of go forward from that kick. It would have been better. Fissela makes a couple of metres, all pops out. We're coming back for a penalty. It was offside, people not offside within 10. Moving back to 10 metres with the ball having been kicked up. In front. Another great carry by Fissadal there. Just dominance, even though they had a penalty advantage and it fumbled at the breakdown, doesn't matter. He just every every carry he gets, he's over the game line. They know they can't, it's just a one on one. He's going to go past them. They need to create extra numbers late on in the game before we miss him and go out the back. You talk about Fissel I mean, likes of Vermeulen third for game line, carries this season. Roots is fourth. Tells you the real story as to why the Chiefs have the most post contact meters of any side in the Gallagher Premiership. It's in five. And now. They will aim for the catch and drive from this position. Initially brought down by Jenkins. Call of once. Townsend's almost got himself caught up in there without able, being able to get the ball out. Slade's working out where he wants to drive, but it's all too late as far as Chiefs are concerned. It's really well defended. Yeah, Alex Moon, fantastic by Alex Moon there. Contested in the air, came down straight through the seam that he's allowed to come through, straight onto the ball, hand over the top. Stops it coming out, there you go, see him with the, the black armband around his bicep, just locks it in, stops it coming out. Fantastic work by the second row there. No doubt a combination of the defensive work that uh, Lee Radford is bringing. Matt Ferguson, of course, who uh, spends an awful lot of time with the bigger animals up front. Go, Sam Vesti talking go, this week about go, Lee Radford, how he's had a massive impact. Advantage for Iwaboso will chase the long pass on the outside. Oh, it's been brilliantly worked. Man of the moment over the line once more. But the intelligence to throw the bounce pass is what that score was all about. Fun, the fumble there by Odendall out the back, put out the back there by Slade, outstanding. Ball over the top, bounce pass. We always say in training, they're undefendable. You can't read it, you don't know it's going to bounce. And like you said, it bounces the man at the moment. North Hampton being so di disappointed with a launch play, right in front of your play, one play, fumble the ball, but skill from Slade. To, to, uh, out the back to Hawkins, a Skinner out the back to Feobosu, dive in the corner. They're the ones your picture paid, they're the ones you want to mark the year. That was a great postcard that he'll send his family with him in the air. So often you see those bounce passes going into the bread basket if someone is waiting. The intelligence of, Sk intelligence of Skinner to say, well, I'm going to bounce it to where I know you can get to. I think there's a slight bit of luck there, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was passing into the space 
it's very unlikely it was going to bounce backwards towards where he passed it. It was only going to bounce towards the touchline. Um, and with the knock-on advantages they had, he knew he had one a chance to, to score. I'm giving it all Skinner, Matt. I'm giving it all Skinner. So, uh, it's a great piece of skill. <laughs> oh, and Slade. By a matter of inches, just missing. Chiefs 12, Northampton Saints nil. Just the spin there, pops up. Yeah, lovely pass. He knew what he was doing there. He'll go to the, the changing room, the meeting on Monday, so he knew exactly where he was trying to pass that. Faye with both sides was on the score sheet last week. Oh, it's that. been knocked on. As much as Saints might get excited. It's a fifth try for Manny Faye with both sides. I've called it and he's called it, so. Alex Livington has been top of the pile with six. That takes Faye with both sides. One behind him. Yeah, and it's great to see him get so much interest in international rugby. Wales, England, the, the question is which way he'll go. Uh, he's not really, in my opinion, he'll make no bad decision where he wants to go because anybody will want to be an international rugby player and he's a top-skilled player. He's got every attribute they need to be an international winger. Yeah, mentioned by Steve Borthwick this week. Almost as if to say, Warren Gatland, your move. One more round of matches, another 80 minutes after today for various players to put their hands up before Steve Borthwick announces the Six Nations squad 17th of January. Fisilau, another one of those who was mentioned, who controls this at the back for the Chiefs. Skinner on the outside arc. Looking to bring Wyatt in, chases on again. Ball is bobbling around. Slightholm's got some work to do here. Oh, and he's not caught it well either. Who's going to get their hands on it? Was spinning around like a top. Set up Chiefs with this position. Hawkins has looked over the top into the corner. On the line. On the line. On the line. Just out on the full. Heard the discussion. Ball has clipped the line. On the line is over. Great kick there. A great exit by. X there, shift it off the scrum, realised the fullback to come up, kicked it behind, put Slight home, who's the right winger, tracking across under a bit of pressure, charge down. Now it's another Northampton Saints exit, which they haven't been brilliant out of so far in the game, out there 22. They haven't got a foothold in the game, we're 20 minutes, 20 minutes in, they really have to get some possession. Very conscious of bigging up a player too much, but again, Faye Waboso with the chase, with the charge down, gave them that position. It's the sort of contributions across the game that saw him Get the Gallagher Premiership Player of the Match award last week against Bristol. You will see better clearances than that from Northampton Saints. Exeter Chiefs will be very happy to have the line out from here, and they go quickly. Yendel at the front. Oh, they're going to play it back. It's going to work beautifully for Townsend. Where were Northampton Saints? From an Exeter Chiefs perspective, frankly, who cares? Try number three. No matter how much Sam Matavesi complains. Great work by Yandel. That, that won't be a prequel. That'll be on the on the money. They've seen an opportunity to go for it. Yandel waiting for the trigger, Stu Townsend calling it, taking it down the front, get it back off him, waiting for it, give it. I think that, that just, at the moment, just shows Northampton need to, a little spark. They're, they're 18 minutes into this game, they haven't fired any shots. To let somebody take such a quick one down the front, with not even recognising that it's a, it's a threat. They just need to wake up Northampton, they'll be disappointed, but we can't take anything away from Exeter at the moment. They've started this game superbly, 2024. Unbelievable, they've carried on what they've done in 2023 into 2024. They are building a lead now, which can they, it will at some point level out and Northampton will get back into the game. But how far can they, they get this going into? Because there'll be some stern words going over at Northampton now. While Slade lines up this kick, where Exeter will be concentrating, let's keep doing the same thing over and over again. 15. Referee's just reminded Henry Slade that the clock counting down has just gone past 15. Yeah. yeah. They like the look of it on the far side, no wonder. Two points on the board. Chiefs up to 19 now. And I'll tell you what, 
if you're Josh Yosefa Scott, you're probably getting quite excited because uh, so far the three try scorers were three that scored last week. Then Yosefa Scott was one of them who scored last week, and he's yet to get across the whitewash. So uh, if all goes to plan, he'll be the next one. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wyatt into the air for Skinner. Furbank, well met, did well to get the offload away. Litchfield, centre, playing on the wing. It's featured across the back line, predominantly from the bench this season. Such is the rotation that Northampton Saints have chosen to go with. As we've discussed, you wonder how long they will try and continue this with a fair amount of star quality on the bench. Hammersley does well to get back and get his hands on it. There is Yusefa Scott. That was the first passive play where Northampton had a bit of possession. Inside. And they looked like they were creating some gaps in the extra defence, but they kicked turn. it away. Uh, that was a time you probably say maybe fire a few more, two more, two more shots to the same it's way. Two. And you know, Exeter now have got a 19 point lead. They can kick it back on top of you and put pressure. Good kick there by Sue Townsend. Messi on the floor, I think, it's re back by Exeter. Well, it was certainly contestable for Hammersley, but either way, cluster of bodies, not a clean enough take. Litchfield just, just on court, yeah. slipped through his hand there, but with what they're doing with the scrum penalties now, how they're putting to whip off the scrum in their own half, they've gone through the middle. Northampton really going to be questioning what next are going to be doing off this scrum. They can't give away scrum penalty. They'll kick it in the corner, put pressure on them there. They shift it to the wide. And they, we're talking about the, the brave, the fearless X of the backs. They'll be doing exactly the same now. I'm just looking at them. They look very calm, collected. They've got one call. They're not talking between themselves. They know they're cool. I'm now looking at the, the Northampton back line. There's, there's lots of small mini chats between each other, who they're getting, what they're going. X look very comfortable at this point. Now, I am looking forward to it going through 12 13 channel and seeing what decision they make. Okay, not gone. Lots of turning of heads and talking to each other, aren't there? I was going to make an excuse that X have got the sun in their eyes, that's why they're struggling, but they're not. <laughs> that the Chiefs are flourishing in the Devon sunshine. Fissel out controlling, they're looking to get another penalty advantage and they have it, Townsend. It's looking really bright in this game, isn't he? Has a little look down the short side, the accompanying drive. Helps him make seven or eight metres then for Mullen. Still playing for the advantage. Quick ball. Skinner. Hawkins. Fifth league start of the season. Been switching with Devoto. Fissler did pretty well to hold on to that. Skinner. Long one out the back for Slade. We still had the penalty advantage being played. Just weren't quite on the same page that time. The Chiefs. No, just glass. front football sometimes speeds itself up so fast it's quite hard to get in position perfectly the whole time but the connection between eight and nine at the moment for Exeter is I think the game changer the speed of ball Fisselau's carrying the ball he's delivering when he carries or even at scrum time controlling it giving nine the opportunity but again they had this earlier Exeter kicked into corner they, the moon got through the line out and was trying to stop resurrect that and not let it happen again and try and do another delivery. Wouldn't surprise me if they have a little breakout, show up something, something different, and then get around the corner as quick as they can. Fisselau's at plus one here. Nine at the front. Off the quick top. ball off the top this time. And they're going to give it route one again. Hawkins will happily offer that. Now they go back to the other side, straight towards the line once more. Nice. Oh, it's another one for Vermeulen. They are barging the door down again and again at Sandy Park. Northampton Saints at the minute struggling to find an answer. Vermeulen gets his second. 
I hate to say I told you so, off at Scott, the line out, they knew the moons, the pressure man, they knew the, they had to move the point of contact as quick as they could. Instead of driving and breaking, they're off the top, straight to the centre, Hawkins carry hard, and Stu Townsend recognises the pre-call that they're coming back against that line. Fislau, like we said earlier, he's such a dominant carrier, two defenders are going to sit on him, and he went across the front of Fislau to Vimulin, who's just as devastating ball carrier to create his second try of the evening. Afternoon, it's a long day. <laughs> Well, it's going to feel like a long afternoon and almost an evening for uh, Northampton Saints. They haven't played any rugby in the opposition half. Everything's been in their own half. They, their own, they are their own worst enemy at the moment. They haven't looked after the ball. They've given away too many penalties, and they haven't fired any shots. We said it the last 20 minutes is going to be interesting, but I said it as well. Exeter's first 20 minutes is going to be whether or not they're going to be in that game in the last 20. And at the moment, that last 20 doesn't matter. Slade to keep them cruising above a point a minute. No problem. They've wrapped up the bonus point try in 24 minutes. Do not adjust your sets. Exeter Chiefs are leading the Saints by 26 points to nil. You don't often see top of the table clashes that look like this inside half an hour. No, definitely not. I, I, as my own opinion, I'd find a way to try and get Tom Pearson on the pitch as quickly as I could. If it was at no, half time, no. I just think he's a, from after his London Irish days, an aggressive tackler, gets off the line, and that Northampton just needs somebody in the defence who's going to go bang some people. This is another opportunity to get some ball in the hand. Smith is just playing away to Furbank, who was well wrapped up. The knock on from the restart, though, is providing Saints really with the first bit of ball in hand possession. Than we've seen. Get just nearly opening up for them. Back they come. Tarek Hafar. First Gallagher Premiership start. No 50 22. With the club. Hold in front, Callum. And you're on now. Furback. Sending Litchfield to try and compete for this. Really good take from Tommy Wyatt. He even managed to get the ball away for Shaq van Mullen who is showing his all-court game, but trying to secure it. They were both so... Or in fact, was it uh, Lewis Pearson, perhaps, who's coming at the side? Indeed. Tommy, Tommy uh, Wyatt, that was a fantastic catch in, in the air, under pressure. It was off chest, it was hands above head. It sort of stops the contest. Fantastic, but such a dominant tackle by Northampton there to create him going backwards, which then made the retreating next team going at the side, which now gives Northampton the first opportunity in the in Exeter's half to create some sort of positive possession. It's their first visit to the 22, isn't it? Matt of AC in his fifth season. Ball brought down. One dummy runner. It's going to be Odendahl who will take it. And Litchfield was the close option they chose not to use then it's Furbank driving well towards the line no Saints looking to fold around the right but they've kept a decent number to the left hand side Alex Coles it's driven back well it's not going to be quick ball for Braley it's going to have to be played away by Munga it's there for the former London Irish man been alongside Moon and Coles, depending on the balance of that second row, back row that Phil Dowson's looked for over the course of the season. Alongside him, a little wider. Here's Alex Coles. New deal announced this week. Now Moon. Just single Tackle runners at the moment for, for Northampton. They need multiple runners that all threat on positive. Well, they've got advantage now, plenty of advantage, so they, they might throw their, their hand out the back. Here you go. Sam Graham was in a good position just Eleven to drop it back. Chiefs defended it well, they were under penalty advantage. Yeah, Northampton around the corner, they're just single runners, no other options. It's an easy one for, for Exeter's defence to just come up and hit it under Omar. They're very well drilled, they're just going to keep hitting you coming. The line. They've got to have more options coming around the corner, create more forward ball. But now for this penalty, they've still got a chance to kick it in the corner. Are they going to maul it? I think they will, they'll back themselves to try and get physically back into this game. 28th minute is not often a point you would say that this is a crucial time, but Six Northampton Saints will definitely be feeling that they have to show that they can score from a position like this. They've been doing it all season. Down five. from Scott Young. Big counter drive that the home fans like. But Matavesi, recognising the pressure they were on, comes away. There'll be questions asked if that pulls out. Not quite yet. Hutchison involved on the drive. 
now it'll come away. It's just a second slow, but there's another advantage being played as Scott Young carries with Davison alongside him. Oh, and it's nearly Alex Cole stepping through. Odendahl was well seen. He's offside, Looked to go the same way. Faye Waboso in an offside position. That's going to be a second yep. penalty. Halfway up the right. Tell him. There's never a good penalty to give away, but he's offside, clear as day, hits the ball, plays the nine. It's probably a good, but they already had a penalty, but it's probably stopped to try opportunity. So, uh, like I always said, my mum tells me off for saying that sometimes it's a good penalty to give away, but that was definitely one of them. Offside, the winger. Looking to tap this. Afar with the pick. Company by his mates. No. Braley. He's too well to get off the line. Looking to raise questions over whether players are onside or not. Furback, can he wriggle his way through? Pirouetting once, twice. Eventually met and floored. Relatively narrow at the minute, Saints. They've just got Litchfield out on the far touchline. Depends whether Graham can get there. Oh, they've lost it. It's simply a knock-on. Faye Waboso comes forwards with it. No advantage coming. I think Saints got themselves in a good position to win the turnover, so we'll just have an Exeter Chief scrum. But that pressure has created the noise from the era around Sandy Park. Yeah, I think that the pressure of the scoreboard now is pushing Northampton for trying to chuck off those that they, they really don't have. They're only five metres away, six metres away. They can hold the ball there and create, create pressure by doing that, but knowing that they are 26 nil down after 29 and a half minutes, they feel like they have to score. They could hold the ball for two more phases. All TMOs come in now. Yeah, that's right. Let's just have a listen. It is. As he pirouettes around. Can you see the screen, Woody? Yeah, I've got a picture of the yeah. screen. Here it comes there, that's the tackle there. Okay, so we've got head-on head. Yeah, so we do have head-on head, yeah. So we're looking at this head-on head collision. Yeah, all right, so off that... I'm going to show you again, Woody. Yeah. Here it comes again, as you pretty much around. So, yeah. for me, we've got an upright tackle who is at fault. We've got clear head contact, we're in the process. He's attacking forward, he um, makes a dominant tackle, so I'm looking at starting a red card, but because of the spinning by 15 whites, I'm looking to mitigate down to yellow. Everyone agree with that? Happy with that, Rosie? Yellow yeah, card? Yeah, I think that's a really good um, analysis. All right. Yeah, thank you. So we are going to see a yellow card no, no for Daffy Jenkins, the actor, the Chiefs captain. So the mark is over there in the middle of the mark. One, One of those as well that I think if we'd seen in real time, Matt Banahan. The unpredictable nature of how Furback was spinning like a whirling dervish through there. Not sure how anyone can react in that time to know that all of a sudden he's in front of you for the tackle. Yeah, it's tough. Three, three spins, three pirouettes from Furbank. The right decision is done, the referees have gone through it. They're going for a quick tap. Afar again. OK, tackle! Chiefs now having to defend with 14. Ball away. Graham driving low. Advantage, one not rolling. Now a little bit wider for Scott Young. Advantage again for the Saints, and a chance just to dive straight through. Cal Brayley. Callum Brayley. Reacting quickest as the defence looked to fan out a little wider. Third try for the club, and boy, did they need that. Yeah, great work by Cal there, recognising momentum, penalty, where the space yeah. is. Yeah, no Even worries. those 14 men what on your own try on? line, here you go, big carry yeah. there. If there's anything clear... By Northampton, round the corner, right. nobody if comes round the corner, uh, just this little gap there. Nobody yeah, fix that pillar next to the breakdown yeah, no where, the, where you need to do on your try line. 14 people, you don't have to defend the back line, so Exeter should have really been comfortable. But they just didn't get anybody around the corner, okay. and Cal Braley realised that, right, and a great try scoring. From him there is from the Italian international. Third on the Gallagher Premiership points list, Finn Smith with 67. And what's now 69 behind Sheedy, who was uh, absent last night in Salford and Slade. But this was Northampton Saints finally using their advantage, using their skills for the relentlessness yeah, at the nine that, at the line yeah, that we expect. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a video of the yellow card to Daphne Jenkins there. Fairbank spinning multiple times, just span straight into him. As you said, you're not expecting to make a carry, so you're at the wrong height. Um, and a great uh, the decision was correct by uh, the referee of how he worked down from a red to a yellow, but we just sat down uh, waiting for some medical treatment uh, to a player down on the side. Is it her far? Yeah, it certainly is. Okay, Time up. Northampton so, really needed that, didn't they? Just before half time, and they'll, they'll be trying to score one more in the next eight, eight minutes to, to soften the deficit at half time. Absolutely. Exeter Chiefs 26, Northampton Saints getting that seven points, and they will want to take advantage. And George Furbank's looking to do exactly that. Fizzes it away. It was not the easiest one to pick up. Brilliant work from Angus Scott Young to pick that off his bootstraps. Davison. Tackle! Chiefs down a defender still. Hafar. He was another one name checked by Borthwick this week. He certainly had plenty of people in his sights, and England head coach is here today. Now the chip over the top. Litchfield has got his hands on that. He's got Graham on the outside, support on the inside from Slito, and they cut the Chiefs open. <laughs> Precisely what was needed from a Saints perspective. Get another score on the board before half time. It's a couple in a couple of minutes. It's like they've woken up. We said they needed something to happen. The yellow card for Exeter seems to be the something that's ignited something in Northampton. They're a great opportunity uh, there. Finn Smith, I think, kicked it or that they recognized here the, the ball out the back here. I thought they put the forward on the outside was early, but they played through George Furbank passed it to the outside. They created that momentum. And that little crossfield here out there and shift it. Hutchinson over the top but perfect you realize Litchfield he's got Graham on the outside or slight home one of the fastest people on in the premiership on the inside give it to the fast man let him run under 14 points when really they haven't had really a foot in the game and now this is really going into half time second half we're talking about the substitutions what's going to make of it third Gallagher premiership try for Ollie slight home got seven across last season this is fifth start support line was perfect 26 14 it is a score line that will just be allowing Phil Dowson to breathe a little easier and now out you get in this game of cat and mouse well Exeter the Chiefs will want to make sure that they do their best to shut down what might be coming next it was nearly same play again yeah same nearly play. another gap for Furbank wasn't it They've obviously been practicing that, recognizing that they back themselves to score in games, and that's the play that they were going to do straight off it. Take him back in. No. Use it. No. Clearly covered. You wouldn't like that. Five and a half minutes remain on Duffy Jenkins' yellow card. How slow it will feel to Chiefs that that time is ebbing away, given the conceding of 14 points so far. Townsend in for Roots. Slade lurking, Yendel round the corner. Needs to be careful, he's not no. isolated. Fissel out. Now he was a key part of the England under 20s. Bit more width. Now Hawkins was lurking. To Mullen. Wrapped up by Moon. Tenth start of the season for Alex Moon. Came through the Saints Academy. Slade, first receiver this time. Then off for Fisselau, who's done an awful lot of carrying. He was top of the tackle count last week in terms of what he was doing defensively. 16 all in all. He's certainly been getting through the carrying this week. Thank you, Pierce. Great wide pass there by Townsend. Just a set up there, Fisselau. Just at the moment, extra just look like they're okay, lulling a bit in energy. Jack. They put so much focus in that first 20 minutes, which gave them the opportunity. Jack. They're not in position as quick as they were at the start. They're not getting around the corner as they did in the first 20 minutes. And this has given Northampton Saints a chance to get back into this game. But now, a few big deep breaths here by Exeter. Opportunity now to get back into the game. They're bringing Hammersley is it, onto the wing, uh, back into onto the back row. 
Where's he going? Six. So they want if they want to scrum with a full pack of eight on their own ball. So they're one down in the back, so they're going to have to be direct. So you know it's going to come down, carry between 10 and 12 channel, or they might even shoot down the short side and just roll it behind and play off the kick off that. But Exeter just want to create that dominance and keep eight inside, but they just need to get some lungs. They've got four minutes to go to get back that dominance they had in the first 20 minutes. No one at all down the blind side for Exeter Chiefs. Saints have kept Lich Litchfield there defensively, but Faye Waboso is just tiptoeing across that side. It's not going to go there. Instead, into midfield, Hawkins. Slade helping drive his mate forwards. He wants to try and make sure he gets a knee to ground. Everybody has to release. Townsend then. Away for Lewis Pearson. Eighth start of the season after 21 minutes off the bench last week. Skinner eyeing up the options, trying to slide through himself, but Berger Odendahl has other ideas. Oh, now this just came flying out a little unexpectedly for Stu Townsend. Missed a fair bit at the start of the season, Stu Townsend, but he's really been showing his value since he's been back. Skinner fancying that little dab into the corner, it's been fielded by Litchfield off the outside of the left peg that'll do didn't look the most comfortable list there just because the way he angled parking him back to if you're a right footer but a good kick from the angle he had five meters out just outside the 22 three minutes now Northampton have got stop next to getting inside the 22 just coming around the corner Numbers. Numbers. Anthony Woodcourt trying to keep the tempo up Yendl, his fifth start in a row, gets it in, fits it out. Right hand fend into Hafar, but he wasn't going to be discouraged. There's Lewis Pearson carrying through. Townsend, Skinner, Slade, he's tried to just lay it on a plate for Faye Waboso, who's somehow managed to wriggle through again. The offload, though, has just gone to a Saints hand. Form of slight home in control. That was nearly a how on earth has he done that once again moment. Thank you. Ball's this side. Yeah, to expose it and then use your feet. Now use your feet. No, it's not. He's not doing a bit of uh, rock coaching there as a referee. Braley. where it needed to be. A minute and a half remaining of the first half, one minute left on the yellow card. Yeah, Fair is just so strong upper body, wide base, gets his arms free, he sees the offload, that's where we're talking about that, they will chance it, they can, and every so often they will come off, and sometimes they will happen like that, and you pass the opportunity to the opposition, but the opposition still have to kick the ball out and give you a line out 30 metres from the line, so great skill there, great power by Fair Obusu, and it gives X another opportunity to always that straight. Competition, knock on. Yeah. Couldn't quite tell on the replay whether Ollie Slighthome was uh, calling for that ball. I will. <laughs> Time off, wingers yeah, down. Up top. Just through Roots' hands. Surf Scott, Cap goes forward. How long have we got? A minute to go. Northampton, do, we ch do they chance it? Get it to an edge, try a try scoring, three phase setup, or just or kill the time and kick it long? What would you do, Dick? I think he got the ball. As a I, think, I, yeah, I, I think I think you've got yourself nearly <laughs> halfway back. Good chance to avoid risking an intercept, throwing too much. Yeah, I, 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 I would probably try and get to the outside 13 channel to wing, see if the opportunity is there. Obviously, these guys are unbelievable at recognising space and opportunities in an instant. So I think they should try and hit that 13 wing seam. But Fair was over under a bit of pressure on his inside outside because he keeps getting a little bit higher than probably what we expected to give the ball over the top an opportunity. And if he does that and 15 closes, that they can roll it behind and play off the kick coming back off that. So if I was Northampton, I'd stress them by just hitting in between Slade and Fair to see what they do. If it's on to run, they put it over the top. If it's not, then they drag 15 up, put it behind. I look forward to the days when uh, our live sport and gaming gets close enough that we can say, what would you do at home? Vote now. And uh, that'll be the option that Northampton Saints select. <laughs> Hutchinson starting flat with Finn Smith. 
Odenhall next to him, so it looks like they're going to be set up to look like they're going to be carrying up the middle. 15 seconds remain of this first half. Yes, ball's out, eight's broken away, oh, ball's out. Left a bit, well done, Stu Townsend there. Did yeah. well, go, 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 go. the laws. Saints were positioned like they were going to attack it, but uh, Thank you. their thoughts on this might change. Finn Smith's just sat in the pocket now. Game's off. Yeah, he's just kicking. Fire back to the Saints. Fly half, it goes. Well, we were certainly promised some entertainment. We perhaps might have thought that that was because it would have been a really nip and tuck performance from both sides throughout this first half. We've had anything but from Exeter Chiefs. Running riot over that first half hour scoring four tries and getting the bonus point. But Northampton Saints finally had their opportunities. Two tries, the likes of Braley and Slight home. And we have a game. Can Saints continue the comeback? They certainly have some work to do, second half. Well, here come Exeter Chiefs for this second half. Of course, Matt Banahan, who is with us, thoroughly enjoyed that first half. And well, and there's a man, Greg Fissel, out, name checked by Steve Borth, because we said in that first half, only playing England under 20s last year. But do you think he's ready for that step up, Matt? There's always an opportunity. Put yourself in, in, the, in the Premiership, to put yourself in the window to see if you can perform at that week in, week out and show what you can do against other internationals. He is definitely showing it. He is showing that he is capable of playing at this standard. International is obviously another standard, but you've got to be in it to try it, and it's looking forward to the future's bright. Northampton Saints get the second half underway. Exeter Chiefs already with four tries on the board. They average the just ten. over four per game over the first ten yes, rounds. Yes. They already got that on the board in the first 24 minutes. Litchfield <laughs> opted to let that one bounce. Yeah, loose, loose kick there by Northampton at the start. Uh, gave opportunity to Exeter to hit that corner. Literally, would be a little bit disappointed with that. It's good catch him on his left foot to take it over his back here. Tommy White kicked it, seen the space. Could have caught it, kicked up the channel because he's static. Just understanding where he is on the pitch, but Northampton still have got to get out of their half. A great carry there by Northampton to set up a big field momentum carry. Reminder that uh, after the yellow card, Exeter the Chiefs are back up to their full complement. Kathy Jenkins back into the fray. On the front. Smith. Wyatt underneath it. Smith just opted to put that down in the middle of the park. Fail with Boso. Everything he does just seems to be a bit exciting, no, doesn't it? into a bit of this yep. middle third aerial ping pong we didn't see too much of it in the first half you wonder just from a Northampton Saints perspective as well whether Phil Dowson has said them at half time we need to get back into just playing our game Townsend juggling it in his 22 skips that one into touch it's a, it's a very uh Uncharacteristic it kicks in in that passage of play, but um, I think Exeter will be quite happy how they came out of that, giving Northampton a, a, a line out just inside their own half. No changes at half time, by the way, just to uh, bring you up to speed. We did wonder, didn't we? As, as we watch this play unfold of the cross field from Finn Smith, it's gone too long. They are the Northampton bench are warming up behind the post where the Exeter bench isn't yet. Finn Smith was under sufficient pressure that he actually hooked that last kick further in field perhaps than he might have wanted. Wyatt was therefore able to take a decent amount of time over it. Slade. Wait. Put that go. up. That one's gone quite far in field. Shift to an edge, you've got an opportunity. Certainly will. Here's Alex Coles, the man they wanted out there for that opportunity. Not for his kicking. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll leave that one to you. I'll leave it to him. The opportunity was there. They just move the defence as a right option by Cal Braley there to shift it there, just carry there, make all of the back go and then kick from there. Obviously, people see the space and want to take it themselves. Um, obviously, extra line out, good break out there. Fissel out to Townsend. Oh, that's beautifully held up for Slade, for Skinner as he came round, and then Wyatt. 
missed last week's trip to Bristol. Started the previous 12. He's nine in a row at fullback. Open play. Oh, ball was out, and there was the opportunity to chip it through. Good knowledge from Hutchinson there, knowing that he can't dive on it within the metre of the breakdown, so fly hacked it forward. Use it! These are the arm wrestles where Northampton need to get more out of it. Get a good carry back of it, or a good kick. At the moment, Exeter seems to be winning all of these. And use it! The tiniest Students last go. shreds of sunshine appearing across Sandy Park. Putting some golden light on a few faces. It'll almost all be gone shortly. Hawkins required with the kick as he overcooked it. Certainly has. A couple of errors creeping into the Chiefs game that he didn't see in the first half. Yeah, uncharacteristics really going away from game plan there by Exeter. They do they set up their, their caterpillar so well and they kick and they chase. Um, it's very unusual for them to, to shift out of that and, and try something no, new. Played away from Coles into midfield. Hutchison just trying to put it on a plate for Odendahl. Smith wanting to lift it over. It's another one out on the foot. What's happened? What's everybody done at half-time? There was none of this. Uh, uh, X to give one to Northampton and Northampton give it straight back. It now gives another uh, setup for X to get out their half. Um, they won't be making the same mistake that they had uh, a couple of minutes ago. They'll, they'll go back to default. And Northampton will be uh, kicking themselves there because that was a, a good time where they could have kicked that deep if they kept it in field and had a good attacking platform off the back of that. There you go. Former England Bath and Gloucester man Matt Banahan, who was with us at Sandy Park. It's the Chiefs. Everything at the very top of that line out. They did enough to win it, but they've got the penalty from the referee. Six. Harvey Skinner. Alex Coles on Daffer Jenkins' arms, as the referee has said, penalty there. Gives extra an opportunity to kick into the, the 22. They're just outside, using the 22 metre mark, mark. A good attacking platform. First half drive, back heel, off the top. Northampton were at questioning what was coming. Into the line out come the Chiefs. Nicely down. Townsend, Skinner. Hawkins. Yeah. Slade was yeah. an outside runner and took a player out, and indeed that's going to be Time the off. penalty. Odendahl was Time the off. man collided with. He's in front of the boys. Your think Henry Slade's feeling it too. Just ahead of the man, not the ball, head on head. Yeah. Is there is there any foul play in that? Question, is it? We're so used to foul play being addressed around areas where there is a tackle or a pass, but okay. there is a moment off the ball and it is a head-on-head -head collision. Yeah. Question is, yeah. who'd be responsible? Uh, you'd, you'd, you'd say that Slade is ahead of the ball, so he's offside. And that, that's a greater head collision than the one the first, uh, in the first uh, half. So he's now not he's now offside, blocking the play player. So it'd probably fall onto to Slade because he's offside. I think he's in trouble here. I wouldn't want, like, to comment because I've never seen it in the game before. A, a head collision ahead of the ball, so I wouldn't know how the, the referee and officials would look at it, but we'll listen into it now. Yeah, that's correct, Woody. Just going to show you another picture there. This, this shot here is a better one, the overhead one. Yeah. Yeah, so just to talk about this so for me i'm seeing a player who is not uh, is not being concerned with the actions that he's doing so he's making contact with the player he does make some head contact and uh, so for me it's a yellow card the majority of the fourth is through the body but there is some head contact so i'm going to go with the yellow card against 13. So, are we happy with that rosie just make sure that it's uh that picture so let's just show you one more time okay, okay. Again. Let's have another little look. He said it was about the force on the body before so the, the head. first contact is, as you say, swift is to the chest and then up. OK, so, yeah. Yeah, so for me, chest and up, so it's a yellow card against 13. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Can I get 13? By a whisker, Henry Slade You're may be a little Henry lucky here. Please. But this isn't red. Certainly reckless. Certainly so, foul play. So, for me, so he, he's offside, he's, he's obstruction. 
He then also makes contact with the head, and this is where the body and rise up. He has to be in control of what he does, he mustn't make head contact there. So it's a yellow card against that 13. Is, the, he's, in front, he's in front of the ball. So there it is, yellow card for Henry Slade. May have been running a dummy line, perhaps a blocking line, but either way, the foul play and the head contact will mean that Chiefs are back down to 14 months again, and the last time they were, they conceded 14 points. Yeah. And Odundar's gone off for blood as well, because he split his head open, so it'll be interesting, Devoto's on. It is... No, they've gone down 14, sorry, my bad. I'm just wondering who's come on for, for Dingwall's come on for Northampton, so a dangerous runner over field. Loose ball off the line out there. Smith did well yeah, just to shit you. that on for slight home. Tackle needs the floor, let it go! Out you come! Can Saints turn the screw against the Chiefs with this numerical advantage as they did in the first half? They've got some depth on this, and that's exactly what they were looking to do, try and get on the outside channel in that space. Furback did well to get the ball away, and Litchfield using his physicality. Centre playing on the wing. Working well. Comes back again, Finn Smith. Looking to send this in behind Townsend. It's come off. Slight home in the tackle. Sam Atavesi's not going to get the present. He might have wished for. Yeah, great play there by Northampton, Northampton up the left, recognising number down, shift it. Litchfield, great carry on the inside, gets his arms free, offload. This is the Northampton we thought we'd get at the start of the home. Ball available, shift it. Crossfield kick recognising there's a nine there. Slight home, unlucky there. Ball in the contact as he looks to pass it, and then a little knock on on the floor. But extra now. Is it inside? It's inside the 22. The referee is telling the nine, so they really they don't want this to be carried outside the 22 because they have to keep it in field with the number down. But they can't control it. If I was Northampton, it was standoff as she let them carry outside the 20s, they've got to keep it in. But this is the right area of the pitch where Northampton will be playing now. Fraser Dingwall is onto the field with Odendahl off. And it does look like Northampton Saints will also be preparing Alex Mitchell and Tommy Freeman as well. I want to try and keep ball here, they got penalties out of the Northampton Saints scrum in the first half. It goes sideways and then it spins, no one's gone forward. Quick build please. They will be hoping that they can continue to eat the time out of this yellow card with scrum possession all by winning penalties at set piece. With Borthwick here, with Mitchell coming on the on the pitch and Tommy Freeman, I think is is a great opportunity for them to show for 30 minutes what they can bring to an England team when the, the England coach is supposed to be here watching behind a window somewhere. Certainly for someone like Freeman, may be considered in a starting role, but to also show what he can do in this sort of time frame, if that was to be a 23 shirt position that Borthwick might consider him for. Yeah, indeed. Precisely the opportunity to audition for a role in a white shirt. And this is the Exeter Chiefs pack going forwards, referee not being brought into a penalty advantage initially, but now he is. Hawkins, Skinner, Why are you kicking for away? Hammersley. It's that, that, that game pressure. knowledge, you have a penalty advantage. Why are you kicking it away as if it's an exit? If, you're, if it's a kick to score, that's fine. But if you're kicking it as it's an exit, you should know that the referee's arm's gone out. There's an opportunity to, to chant something for yourself, not just kick it to the, the, the 15 in the backfield. Got a bit of a limp going on as uh, Ben Hammersley. Yep, yeah, Made his league debut here in... Uh, Round one against Saracens when they put on that monster score. There were moments in that first half. I wondered if Exeter Chiefs were going to be doing a similar job this afternoon. But time off, please. Perhaps a little bit of discipline. And two yellow cards are going to influence how this match turns out. Now any changes being run by both sides. Whole front row replacement by Exeter. Max Norrie, Alec Hepburn, former Saints man Aaron Painter onto the field as Yendel. Takes his leave. Just stop. Just stop. Litchfield off for Tommy Freeman on the left wing. You got everyone, Dixie, are you happy? 
There's a lot of subs. Time on, thank you. Now from the top, Fissel out. Von Mueller. Straight into Curtis Langdon, who is onto the field for Northampton Saints as well. Langdon, Mitchell, Dingwall and Freeman all on the field now. Albeit Dingwall with the HIA so far. That's the reason he's on the field. But, oh, it's just been lost forwards, though. Jenkins carrying straight into contact, nothing coming from what was just a simple knock-on. Yeah, an opportunity here, Northampton to shift it, great tackle there by the man of the moment. Bay with Osu to stop that three-on-one on, on himself. Uh, Furback would be a little bit disappointed, but he can't control that if somebody's arm comes into where he carries the ball. Uh, and now it gives a chance for Mule in there. is the way he passes the ball off these, these plus-one breakouts, the way he carries. We asked that spoke at half time, is he good enough? He's showing all the attributes that he can do. He's carrying the ball well, he's tackling, he's made some great tackles. But it's ball out the back, they're looking at here, are they? Low tackle, just Hutchinson on Tafford Jenkins, but Chris Lau just his passing off these plus ones has been on, on the money. You have to defend him and then Vermeulen's not coming onto it at pace. They're a hard back row to stop these 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 three together. We've talked about a lot of other players, but Roots, Chris Lau, Vermeulen, great combination there by Extra Tav. The ref at the moment just looking at something on the big screen. Players looking to come in and have a conversation with the referee before we've uh, even had a formal referral. Anthony Woodthorpe is striding towards the big screen. The process that he's gone through there is totally correct. Look at the height of the tackler, he's low, the ball carrier's low. Uh, and sometimes in rugby we are going to have instances like this. Um, and the way that the, the TMO and the, the ARs and the ref came to that is, is the correct decision, in my uh, opinion. Yeah, low carrier and a defender getting as low, bent at the legs, bent at the knee as he can be. Just one of those rugby collisions. Quite, quite right that we deal with foul play. Daphne Jenkins coming off for a HIA, I think just after that tackle. And Russ Tuima coming on in the replacement for that. Good season with extra Russ Tuima. Well, Daphne Jenkins already had 10 minutes off with the yellow card in the first half. That 10 more minutes here, good 60 minute game. <laughs> I, for Northampton, I have been very impressed with Pafar. I think he's done really well for them, getting around the park, even though they haven't had dominance all the time in scrum. He's been doing really well, but he, he really has impressed me. Well, certainly, someone like Joe Marler picking up a bit of an injury with Harlequins. There isn't a wealth of props on either side, as far as England are concerned at the minute, and Pafar was one of those on the list that Borthwick knows is worth keeping an eye on. Bayer Waboso was just run across to the right. As uh, Townsend has walloped that out. Yeah, just, just came off the outside of the foot. There's just ones you smile, you laugh, you ignore. He, he, he knows he, on another day, if you kick that, it's just he's dropped on the outside of his foot, it's gone straight out. Okay, he's, he knows, he'll just forget about it. He'll make another positive ego on the outside of the foot, just clicked it. He'll make a positive involvement in the next couple minutes. Mitchell comes in at scrum half. Signed the contract extension this week, Alex Mitchell. Announced on New Year's Day. As Tommy Freeman gets wrapped up. Mitchell wanting to put that into a bit of open turf at the back. Faye Boso. Mitchell getting underneath it. Furbank to his left, but Mitchell 
Out the ten. Put it aerial. Skinner is there to take it. Tap tackle from Mitchell is just enough. Oh, and it will be the turnover that the Northampton Saints were appealing for. Finn Smith's taking it behind the referee. They've seen something. Shift to the edge. This is what Sam Vesti's all about. Pace of play, get it to space as quick as you can. Now, is there a turnover coming the other way? No, Mitchell will go. Ball comes flying out. No release. Just building momentum now, Northampton. A couple of decisions gone their way. The yellow card for Exeter in the first half. They scored two off the back of that yellow card to Daffy Jenkins. Now, they haven't scored anything yet off, off well Slade's off. They've still got an opportunity now. They've got three minutes with their pressure on Exeter's line. Finn Smith putting it into the corner. Sam Vesti, you mentioned. How many? Talked about Finn Smith this week, saying he's a sponge, he wants to learn everything. Thanks, Rosie. I heard Phil Dowson say pre-match, of course, he's had involvements around England training squads. Was mentioned alongside the other Smith, Marcus, as the number 10s that may be in the mix for England, but this is Northampton Saints trying to strike from set-piece. Mitchell claps the hands, wants it quickly. Big drive from Sam Graham. Now there's some width, oh, it's an absolute walk-in. Furbank. Beautifully put through the hole by Mitchell. Made it look so simple. Work done. The Saints came their way downfield, kicked into the corner from the set piece, using the forwards, and then scrum after fullback. As easy as that. Yeah, all just came from the quick tap in the middle of midfield. As you watch Mitchell take up and under Not over the ball, I think it's Alex Coles. Over the ball gets the penalty. Quick tap by Finn Smith. Finn Smith on the back foot. They realised off the top of the lineup they couldn't wrestle with Exeter in the mall. They went straight off the top, hit the midfield, round the corner. Exeter didn't get anybody round round it to protect that outside edge. And George Furbank, Mitchell to Furbank, link straight under the posts. Seven points. 26, 21, 55 minutes gone. This is going to be a great last 20 minutes now. <laughs> well, the volume goes up at Sandy Park, the temperature goes up. Change of nine for Exeter. Tom Cairns on. Stu Townsend, who has, a, who has actually had a great game today for Exeter, is off. Yeah, Cairns helped look after the nine shirt in Townsend's absence. Started 14 games in all competitions this season, so... He won't be overawed by the occasion. Top of the table clash, delivering in Gallagher on. Premiership Rugby at the start of 2024. Fisher out with the carry. Around the corner they come. Alec Hepburn. Oh, Skinner's ball for Jenkins. It's not going to. Uh, Hawkins, I should say. It's not going to find a way through. Yes, Tackles made by three white. Cairns was just looking to snipe. Opportunity to play now against the likes of Alex Mitchell. Faye Waboso just looking on his outside where Hawkins was lurking, knows that there's big physicality in those thighs if he needs it. Cairns opting not to send it down the line. Oh, penalty chains. Job done. Chunya Munga. Super job of getting in there. Just wonder whether Cairns has just tried to snipe one too many times then. Yeah, definitely. All the forwards are disappointed, they're, they're frustrated because they were calling for it. They saw some mismatches where they could get round and get into the game, and they obviously saw a gap himself and took it and got hit with a good dominant tackle by a, a Northampton player, which gave Chunga the opportunity to get the steal. Mitchell wanted to come back this way. Dummy will open the door. Slide home on the right. Gets the ball. Oli Slide home to score his second in the match. It draws Northampton Saints level. The work of Alex Mitchell, the finishing from Slide Holmes. It's game on at Sandy Park.
Again, the Exeter had enough numbers on the short side here. Just jumped ahead. Ross Tarima just jumped ahead. Gave Mitchell the inside option. They're the options he's going to take. And once again, you're looking for your fastest men on the pitch. Who do you want outside you? Ollie Slight home there to run it in. Great work by Mitchell there to recognise. They were actually setting up there to, for an exit. It's come back to the short side to kick. Realised Russ Tarima jumped ahead, gave him the inside option, just sniping. That's a nines dream, finished off by a winger's dream, untouched. Great finish there. A good big kick here by Finn Smith to possibly take Northampton's lead. And then we fall into the 22 minutes. Left to play. Goodness. What a game we have here. High drama. We've still got 22 minutes left. That'll do for Finn Smith. Fourth try and the bonus point on the board for Northampton Saints. The brace from Ollie Slight home. Northampton Saints take the lead for the first time. Vimulin's off here. And Hammersley's off as well. Three subs made by uh, Exeter here. Let's try and bring some energy. Time on! Northampton Saints, no, sorry, two point advantage now. Eight tries so far in the hour. Ollie Skinner Devoto. sends it down. Sorry, Matt. No, Oli Devoto's on as well now. And Zach Wimbush. So they brought on a lot of, and Ross Vincent. So they're trying to bring some people to bring some energy to get right back into this game. Mitchell. Straight out, yeah, straight out. Look for the exit, but it is straight out. It was the starting scrum half for England in that Rugby World Cup semi-final just over two months ago. What a ride he had, not even selected in the initial squad. News of Tom James signing a new deal this week as well for Northampton Saints in the scrum half department. In from Norrie. Skinner looking to use Devoto. Hepburn up to the 22. Skinner. Just pirouettes inside Tom Pearson. Another one of the replacements. Oh, no, and now it's a rabbit from the hat. Oh, look at that from Russ Vincent. I don't know what's, that, what's happening in the backfield here. Is it Hutchinson on Tommy White. A lot of men in there. You can't see it as Ross Vincent just scored a try. Something out of the breakdown. Either Tommy White pulled out Hutchinson at the side and created this kerfuffle. I don't know if they'll go back and look at it, which created that, that area where Ross Vincent could snipe through. But Hutchinson was not happy with something at that breakdown. If they're going to look at it or not, I don't know. Well, certainly, uh, I'm sure it will be being looked at by David Rose. Let's just see. Well, I think this is going to be the answer. I might not write down Ross Vinton having scored a try just yet. No. I think you part the part of the rock, he then can't take the man out. Check how the gap is created. So can we get into the start of that breakdown? Here we go, Woody. Okay. So you'll see 12 white pulls 15 black. That's the first action. Yeah. Which is gonna we're gonna run it through now, mate. Okay. So we have a player over the breakdown. As you say, 12 white pulls them out of the breakdown. He's not allowed to do. Just listening into the officials here. 20 picks up. Yeah, 20 picks up, and then we've also got the actions of the player it appears to be lifting, lifting him away from the breakdown as well. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do here, Rosie. So for me, the first offence is the player that pulls the player out of the breakdown, so we're going to restart the penalty against him because I'm not happy with that player then reacting, picking him up and creating more of a gap. So we can't allow the try and restart the penalty against Saints. OK, that's fine, mate. OK. Yeah. That seems a fairly logical to... flow of events as far as Anthony Woodthorpe's yeah, explained that. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, had so. a, 
He's had a, agree, an interesting I game today. Lots of uh, high chats and small talks with players with their, with their head collisions, and I think he's come to the right decision again there. So, yeah, the first action goes against Rory Hutchinson. What then happened after that was sufficient to allow the try to be scored, but it, that was an illegal act, so we will go back for the first illegal act, which was the penalty against Rory Hutchinson. We hope you're keeping okay. up with us. Shot. Shot called. And, well, talk about game management, talk about the psychological side of the game now. Yeah. These sides have scored four yeah. tries apiece, yeah, no, but now... The end of the day, can't not be next to the play. Chiefs' fancy putting three points on the board just to lift themselves that whisker in front. Yeah, and if you're going to choose a man this year who has kicked them stupendously well to win them at the end of the games, you want Slade there slotting this through the posts. It does surprise me how dominant X have been not to kick it to the corner and use their dominance to try and get five or seven points, but they've chosen to do this now. They've already got their try bonus point. They want to get the win as Slade stands up okay. to attempt this kick. Henry Slade to put Chiefs back in front. Great kick there, just curled it around the post, teasing us from up here in the commentary, looking like it was going to miss the right hand post, but it went straight behind it, straight through the middle. As Exton now lead with one point with 18 and a half minutes to go. Also, just to bring you up to speed, Berger Odendahl has failed his HIA, and Daffod Jenkins has failed his HIA. So changes that have taken place as a result will remain Wyatt just on the outside of the boot and it'll be enough I think uh, the first failing for Daffod was how annoyed he was getting up going off the pitch so they would have probably said his first sign it but it was aggression good delivery there Langdon to Moon set up the midfielder Pearson Saints not hanging around. I want to demonstrate the reason that they started New Year at the top of the Gallagher Premiership table. Blown away inside the first half hour. If you're just joining us, 26 points to nil it was to Exeter Chiefs. Two yellow cards for Chiefs, though, and during that first one, 14 points conceded. Oh, it's lovely work to find the space. Freeman will then draw Furbank. He's got another option on the outside for Slide Home and the hat trick. It's another one. Fifth one on the board for Northampton Saints. And they're starting to purr now. The lead changes hand once more. Like you said, they've, they've, they've been working into this game slowly, slowly. They didn't get the start of the game. This is what they were trying in the first time. It was getting stopped at that point at Finn Smith reaction. in the You're first half. Yeah, yeah, they were so blitzing it, but it's coming off. Balls are quality past the handing. Reverse. Get it to the edge. Get it to your speed men. Get it to the people in good in open space. George Furbank, open space, making the right decision at the right time. Finn Smith to Freeman here, out the back. Straight to Furbank. There's all your boys you want on the ball in open space. Slight him in for his hat-trick under the posts. Another seven points really makes this game interesting now. Really should have actually gone for seven points in the corner rather than the three. But that is, a, that is what we thought Northampton would bring in the first 20 minutes. And it's taken them 63 minutes to, to wake up and bring it in. But now, how are Exeter going to come back from this? Right, time back on, he's okay. Ten points from the boots of Finn Smith. Takes him up to 77. And the points over the course of his season. Northampton Saints back in front. The on three. Oh. oh, it's just been knocked forwards. Tommy Freeman, we spoke about coming on the pitch and making an impression and doing your, you're doing your bits. Catches the restart, gets his arms free, drives his legs, Slade, balls available, lifted to Coles. Oh, disappointing there because I'd have put that money on a day. That was another try. An opportunity now, Exeter, with the scrum to get back into the game. They should be still full of confidence, even though they're behind on the scoreboard. They need to keep pressure, keep keep Northampton down in this half. Crouch! 
Feuerbos who sit sitting deep behind ten, so it looks like they're going to come across and use him. Do Chiefs still believe that the pack have the ability to earn penalties? Referee's just saying he wants Tom Cairns to use it. Sits up, Skinner. Feuerbos, both so volume goes up when he gets the ball. Wimbush made his league debut against Leicester Tigers just before Christmas at Wimbush. And he got 11 minutes. Slade. Oh, On the outside, it was a good shot. Some more. It's a more now. They need to get it to ground, otherwise Northampton's defence, which they weren't doing the first half. They've done well there. It's available. Great work there by Exeter. That was certainly a squeaky moment for them. Well, Two him, defense looks good though. Real battle in all departments at the minute. Falling. Alec Hepburn, not foot. so much carrying. Yeah, he's fallen over his own feet. Ethan Root sat on this far touch line, realizes he's got a mismatch against Alex Mitchell. Short ball. An option. Just looking positive enough for Chiefs at the minute. Skinner, he was actually pointing the other way before he received the ball. Tackle came in from Dingwall. Slade. For Boso, wonder if he might have been better getting on the outside arc there, but quick enough ball for Norrie to take. And the noise goes up yeah. in that corner, but players going off their feet to secure the ball. Northampton Saints will get it. Yeah, Fissel off his feet there. Off feet. Just trying to create some momentum, getting the breakdown early. And inside. Carry there by Max Norrie. Slade's in there, off his feet there, trying to get Tommy here. Fissel <laughs> out of control. As an Anthony one. Six point game. Sufficient that any penalties that Exeter Chiefs might get is going to have to tempt them to go for more. On the line. But it's Northampton Saints who are coming forwards. Another score for the visitors. Just wonder what Rob Baxter's side might have in the tank. Brought down by Tom Pearson. There with Langdon and away from Mitchell. A little float in the middle. They were just trying to get Dingwall on the outside shoulder, but that's a penalty to Exeter Chiefs. He's on the ball. Who's that? Skid up. It is. Ten's on the ball. And you're still off feet. So there's two, two decisions there. Good carry there feet. on the ball. Harvey Skinner straight on top of it. Stealing, they said, on you're on the hands. ball and you're off your feet at the front yeah, of Hutchinson. So there was two penalties there, but great work there by Harvey Skinner. Now they need to really push themselves into the 22 with a great kick there by Slade. Put a little outside banana curve on that, didn't he? I think he sliced it. <laughs> Just to gently push it the other side of the 22 flag. Inside of turned over. From Saints going forwards to Chiefs going forwards. Behind on the scoreboard as they are. Good competition. Yeah, Northampton's ball. And use it! Inside. Mitchell won't be in any rush. He won't want to be keep, get in, keeping this infield, Mitchell, with Feo Bosa down there. But he has kept it in. Chip from the winger. Might just be a little too far. It is going to allow George Furback to call the mark. We spoke about before the game about the bench coming on for Northampton. Not only how exciting they are, but just the knowledge of what they know where to and right areas of the pitch, kick it in, kick it off. Furback there recognising he's inside the 20. Just take a mark, just take the sting out of the game, get his forwards, his players back with under breath and a good exit kick, putting Exeter back into the half. Yeah, he's <laughs> talked about the captaincy as well this week, George Furback saying it's giving him an extra buzz standing in for Lewis Ludlam. Signed a new deal this week. Front field. Oh, Exeter Chiefs on the ball. Pulling off moves from the front of the line out once more, and now they've got themselves a penalty. 
chance to play under this penalty advantage. Will they be able to take advantage? Slade pumps it once, then Wyatt. Wasn't the easiest take for Vincent, who has shown the touchline. It won't be seen as enough of an advantage, so we'll come back. Back to where we were two minutes ago when Exeter kicked it in the corner and lost the line out. So they have a second go at it. They did the front peel again, which they scored off earlier. Or a variation of it. Which then gave him 40 metres down the line. Freeman are just not, not rolling away there. Shifting the ball to the edge. A little bit too lateral, but they had their penalty advantage, so they could throw it to the win there. Loving Max Norrie giving it the full sidestep dance down the 15-metre channel as well. In front of nobody. <laughs> That's why I loved it. Yeah. Well, listen to this. Sandy Park, no, they have to turn it up. Line out, much safer this time. Oh, but into midfield, was lost by Devoto. They're going to not get these chances soon, next. Uh, they've got to capitalise, they've got to look after the ball. Northampton give them two chances to get in, and they've okay, still scuffered the both edge. of them, destroying the first line out and that one there, coming off the line. I think the pass from Cairns is a little bit high no, on Devoto, and that's why he dropped it behind him on his right. But they've got to take these opportunities, otherwise the scoreline will stay the same. Lunge is over. Clearance made by Mitchell. Yeah, wasn't the easiest one for Devoto. Three seasons ago, Oli Devoto, well, he was playing 24 games a season. It's been single figures since then. 150th Premiership appearance against Bath a month ago. Having to make do with the 22 shirt once again after starting against Bristol last week. Here he is in midfield. Oh, well, that's gone to nobody, but Faye Wabosa is there and gets around one, as he often will. And then Furbank in to make the tackle. Cairns up for two emotes, a lovely ball inside for Fissel out. And now connects to the Chiefs, go again. Oh, the offload to Ema all the way. Oh, Tom Cairns. Central for Rossi Tuima to back his fifth for the Gallagher Premiership season. And how valuable might that one be? Oh, lovely inside ball there. Offload to Roots. Back to Cairns. This offload here, there, out the top to Rossi Tuima. Nobody's going to stop him carrying in, but that all started from the ball to ground. The man of the moment, Feyder Wabosa, creating momentum, creating forward, go forward, creating quick ball. So then that pass there, Twima, he knows people are going to jump him, a little inside ball to, <coughs> to Griffisilau, and then the offloads all the way to the side, just keeping the ball alive. We thought it was going to be stay at the end of this game, it definitely isn't now. It was the lick of the lips as he saw the line at his mercy. And Henry Slade. But Exeter Chiefs back in front. Watch the replay here. Tuima and knowing people are going to jump to Fislau. Soft hands to Roots. Cairns, this offload from Cairns there. If he meant it, it's fantastic. If he didn't, it's even better. Fislau with a Rossi Tuima over for the try with a big smile on his face. 71 points on oh, the scoreboard. Exeter Chiefs, 36. Keep coming. Northampton Saints 35. Skinner. Who's going to blink first? Wyatt. Most metres. Beating the most defenders than any other Gallagher Premiership player this season, Tommy Wyatt. He can add another couple to his tally there. They won't want to stay in this area of the field too long. Exeter seem to have got a bit excited, not on the pitch, but in the crowd as well. The noise is building up. Definitely their 16th man. Bringing him home, they're going to hope for the next six minutes. They've got a one-point lead. They need to get out of their half and not give away any penalties. It's going to be the slowest six minutes for the Chiefs faithful in quite some time. Oh, and the ball's been charged down. Oh, but it's an offside against Alex Coles. Tom Cairns. He'll be breathing a sigh of relief after that. Six half up the right. I think Alex Coles has got to risk it. Chance of the game. 
Yep. He's adjudged. Now it gives a chance for Exeter to get out of their half again. Player on the wrong side. Alex Coles. Certainly been performing well for Saints over the course of the season. There is a certain Courtney Laws who's retired from Thank England. You. Wonder whether England could be in need of another Northampton Saints second row, back row line out option. Devon is rumbling. Timo Mayana Vanua is going to try and help Northampton Saints rumble towards that try line once more. Replaces Munga. Chiefs. Through Devoto and Vincent. Big solid bit of defending in midfield from Hutchinson. Fissel out. He puts a bit more depth on it. Skinner thought it was just opening up. It was worth the risk. Norrie. Still going. More lateral than forwards. But possession in every second is all that Chiefs will worry about. Tackle called. Vincent, not quite sure how you're going to select a player of the match with the result hanging in the balance here, but uh, you might have to start thinking about that. Matt Banahan as Ethan Roots comes round to the short side, off the foot play just off a boot. Sandy Park doing its best to be the 16th man. Oh, but loose ball is going to give Northampton Saints possession, and they might have some width here if they can get it out there. Finn Smith, Oxford, boot to ball. Freeman had to check the run, Slade is bounced off in the tackle. All of a sudden, from close, precious attack for Chiefs inside the Saints 22. No, it's the Saints who've got some way to go. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Is that flat? Is it forwards? Questions will be asked, but in the meantime, it's Slidehome who's chipping ahead. Looking for his fourth. Wyatt. Not much time, turns, and that will ricochet into touch and give the line-out to Exeter Chiefs. But there's a fair bit to unpack there. Let's go, let's go. This pass... Uh, let's go. No, we're playing on. Come on. Five man. Over Big defensive moment. Good tackle. Brought to the tail. Legal sack. tackle from. Oh, uh, no, it. it was Manu Van Ur. It was uh, Yogan. Manu Yogan named in the 23 Tom, for the first time in the Premiership this season, returning from that groin injury sustained in September. It's coming down for slight home. Quick offload. Wanted to set Furbank away. Chiefs appeal for a turnover. Langdon. Mitchell fires it away for Finn Smith. Well, they've got numbers around the corner here, Northampton left. If they're clinical. And they do manage to step through. Good Still work in. from Tommy Freeman. 3v1. Mitchell oh, again. Fayou Boso. He knew he had to make it. Couldn't allow him to get on the outside. That's exactly what Sam Graham's trying to do. He's played well. Nayana <laughs> Vanua. Just a single point in it. Volume goes up to try and support the defensive effort of Exeter Chiefs. But it's Saints in a central position. Finn Smith is just beginning to hover a little deeper. Is he thinking what we're thinking? Short ball again, Ayana Vanua. Chiefs defence is holding firm enough for now. Smith that time, back in at first receiver to ship it on. Yeah, if they get to the edge here, not excellent now, comfortable now in defence, because they got to an edge, they can get off the line and keep moving forward. Oh, crossfield kick. He's looking for Slidehome. Oh, he's taking it well. Slidehome looking oh. to get on the outside, breaks the first tackle, ball back inside. Is there going to be a late drama here? Oh, 
across the line out to Northampton. Five metres out. Oh, you've got to take it five and five. Oh, but it's their line out. Everybody takes a breath at Sandy Park. 45 seconds to go. Slight over crossfield kick off low to the inside Hutchinson. Hutchinson chucks it inside, hits Slade's face, bounces in field, hits the post, goes down. 30 seconds to go. You're going to say this is the last opportunity Northampton have got to score here. We knew we were going to be here for a great game. Can the league leaders before this weekend make the final play and get victory? Round the corner they go, slide home again. Already three tries to his name. Chiefs score numbers round the corner. That's where it goes. Big frame of Tom Pearson can't get there. Hutchison started to celebrate. Oh, if Exeter come to the right, they walk in Northampton, you walk in, go to oh, the right. Oh, and it is going to be the walk-in. Oh. Oh. The man who celebrated early is going to be the man who can celebrate now. Rory Hutchinson has done the job for Northampton Saints. And under all the pressure, having been 26 points down after 24 minutes, how on earth have the Saints come back to do this? It's the sort of quality that saw them at the top of the table at the start of the year. And Rory Hutchinson has got them the key score with the clock in the red. Yeah, just the just the, what we said, the tempo that the people they bring off the bench, the experience they have moving the ball to the right way, to move in, to, or give themselves opportunities which they didn't give themselves in the first 20 minutes. I couldn't have asked to come to a better game to watch the top two teams, Nick, with yourself and watch them play to the games. We knew there'd be mistakes, we knew there'd be tries, but we said the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes are going to be pivotal. Extra 26 points up, they'll be disappointed they didn't win, but that's the quality of the opposition in this, in this league. Northampton are so good, they can come back into the game and score possibly 42 points. They're on 40 with Finn Smith's kick. Oh, unbelievable game to come watch, to commentate on. End to end, some great tries, moving side to side. And the kick is successful, 42 points to 36. Ben Smith adds the cherry on the top. What an extraordinary game we've witnessed at Sandy Park. It's an eighth league win of the season and the first time Saints have bagged three away wins in a row for two years, but it's been the manner of the match that we've enjoyed. They've ended Chiefs unbeaten home record. And for Saints fans, well, this is big. No one wins titles in January, but this is a big one. For Chiefs, well, the Denta Fortress Sandy Park will sting a bit, but Rob Baxter won't dwell for too long with this side, who performed so well and have been exceeding expectations. And Matt Banahan, your Gallagher Premiership Player of the Match, Oli Sleitheim. Yeah, Oli Sleitheim, a, a, a big mention goes to Greg Fisselau for Exeter. He was superb, and if, it, the, if the points went the other way, he'd definitely be a man of the match. But Oli Sleitheim, in the game where Northampton players didn't really get the, the game by the scruff of the neck, he did the simple thing well. He picked up short lines, he was great scoring tries, obviously a hat-trick today, he was pivotal, being in the right place at the right time, not doing a lot of things wrong, right place, and that's all you've got to be sometimes as a winger, these opportunities aren't there all the time, just picking up inside shoulders, outside shoulders, right place, and when you come against a top team and you score a hat-trick, you've got to be walking away with something, you walk away with the W and you walk away with the man of the match, but a great game by him, didn't really put a foot wrong the whole game, and a lot of the other tip players obviously had good games, but he stood out because he didn't do anything wrong, he did the basics extremely well. Seen 78 points scored here, Matt. Yeah, uh, uh, we both nearly lost our voice. So. <laughs> what a treat! Can we come back every week? Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic, and we talk about the game, growing it, watching it, seeing people play, and you want to see these guys at the top of the, the table playing rugby like that against each other. We don't want to see the conservative game, knowing that they're playing against first and second, that we're going to sit in a shell and kick it. They'll both be disappointed. Well, X will be disappointed they didn't win, but there'll be a lot of positives in their game. Um, the start of the game, the way they attacked, the way they came back at the end of the game when they got tired, the lulls they had in the defence, they got a little bit tight, which gave Northampton the opportunity to shift wide. The two yellow cards obviously were massive because they shifted, I think, three three possible tries in that time. So uh, Northampton, the relentless of that they stayed in the fight, they didn't give up, they didn't roll over. Northampton would be really positive. Well, actually, the Chiefs will get a losing bonus, they get a try bonus as well, so they will take points from this game. It will be five points on the board 
for Northampton Saints. And here we are. This is uh, Oli Swightenham receiving his Gallagher Premiership Player of the Match nod. Well, thanks to Jack Miller and Northampton Saints for uh, bestowing that for us. Well, the Gallagher Premiership continues to march on. Record crowds, record viewers, and absurd scorelines. Exeter Chiefs 36, Northampton Saints 42 is how it's finished on the scoreboard.